Hello everyone this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and in this lecture today I am going to talk to you about the person who played one of the made one of the greatest contributions to the Indian freedom movement and his name is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi he was born on 2nd October 1869 and his contribution uh, he, we won't go into his personal life but we'll talk about uh, what he did in India uh, for the freedom movement and then um, we'll also talk, up, talk about his life before he came to India because after doing law in 1893 um, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, he went to South Africa and he was there at Durban in 1893 as a young barrister. And he actually had gone there as a lawyer only um, to fight the case of uh, Dada Abdullah. Now, one may easily ask that, uh, see, in India he was not a successful lawyer, he was not a successful lawyer. Now, one may ask that how he got this case, that was just a stroke of luck, a stroke of uh, a chance that he ended up with this case. But Dad Abdullah was a Gujarati merchant uh, in South Africa. <coughs> then he was the first uh, Indian barrister in South Africa. Okay, first Indian barrister in South Africa. That's why he, he that this place is to big advantage to Gandhi. And then there were a lot of people who were already there uh, in South Africa. Already in South Africa. So. Uh, Indians were already going in South Africa, especially since 1890s, right, to work on the sugar plantation. That is why Indians were going there. And, and also, you know, um, many uh, merchants were also going there because they, they were sugar plantations. And the merchants who were going there, they were mainly um, the Meman Muslim, Meman Muslims uh, who were going to the South Africa. They had their own set of problems and these problems were basically related to the education and number two was related to the which was a bigger problem and that was a problem of racism and Gandhi plays a great role in fighting this problem of racism and if I have to tell you something about Gandhi uh, he his father when he uh, his father was a Diwan uh, right and he was a Gandhi was a native of Kathiawad Please observe that Gandhi was not born in British India. He was born in a princely state. And then he, he uh, when he leaves to fight this case, he had to travel. He had to take a journey from uh, Durban to a place called Pretoria. These two places are in South Africa. Now, you have heard of that story where Gandhi was thrown out of the uh, railway uh, train and when he re re realizes the problem of uh, racism. So the name of the plus platform, the station where Gandhi was thrown, it is known as Peter Maritzburg. Okay, Peter Maritzburg. So that is the name of the station that is in South Africa only, right? Now, anyway, right, Gandhi had to reach Pretoria, so he reaches Pretoria. Now, once he reaches Pretoria, he starts working on the case of Dada Abdullah. Okay, this case of Dada Abdullah, and. Uh, while he was working on the case, he also offered uh, uh, to the Indians over living there whatever else he could do because he had a lot of time because he had just one case initially when he went over there and this uh, incident also was uh, effing in his mind. So he just went over there and he said, okay, if anyone wants to learn English, I can teach you English. Gandhi was a barrister he and he had done his law from England, right? After doing his Indian law for the barristership for that he went to England. Now. While Gandhi, because he was free over here, so he also started writing articles in the newspaper against the Britishers that they were the offenses that they were committing against the Indians, especially the racism. Gandhi actually believed because having lived in Britishers, while he was in England, he did not suffer any racism in London. While as a student, uh, he 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 had like great many um, white friends, Christian friends and Muslim friends. So Gandhi was very, very secular person having brought up in that kind of society where the people of other religions were his friends. That is how it was going on. Okay. So the English were, uh, he, started, he started teaching English and he started venting out uh, against the Britishers and the press because it, it, was, it wasn't a really a protest actually. He wanted to make the government aware of what was happening in the society. He genuinely believed in the British government. He said that we are the equal citizens of the empire, whether you are a British or, or anyone else. That is how his philosophy was. Okay, 
now uh, uh, when gandhi settles this case of dada abdullah <coughs> he comes back to india right and then um, you know he he makes several trips to india from 1893 to the final, to the final year of his return okay and then uh, when he was uh, you know coming back to india south africa's people asked him to oh, sir you why don't you stay here for one more month and solve a few more problems just like you solved problem of dada abdullah so they asked for him one more month over the uh, at that time but uh, you know uh, one more month but gandhi ended up staying there for almost 20 years 20 years that is the story over there and then uh, moreover you know see what is happening that that after settling the case you know he was when he was about to come in back to india you know he raised the issue of the bill of disenfranchisement of indians which was in the process of being passed by the natal legislature so natal rather okay so, uh, so, so some bell was there i'll talk to you uh, just in a small while from uh, let me just say uh, talk to you about few more things about gandhi okay now before i tell you about the natal congress let me tell you that why Kong gandhi ji he became a leader in south africa what was so special about him he's just a young lawyer right born in 1869 and it is just 1893 so it's not much age right this 24 year old guy creating ripples in south africa so many of you listening to this video will be around that age bracket of 25 24 years so how can you know do we have that capability it is for us to think for a moment now now see he had many capabilities in him for example he could speak english he could speak to the britishers in their language not many indians knew the language of english he understood the entry cases of law so if you want to do something big in your life it's quite clear that you must know the language of the land very properly number two you must be aware of the law Number three, he knew how the governance system worked, right? And then, you know, he could draft petitions. So you must have a good writing skill if you want to be a good, uh, you know, uh, leader over here. And then he had the uh, he had this ability of creating organizations. He would create organizations like these days people create Facebook pages. You know, they just 10, 10 20 likes and and uh, unknown purpose unnecessarily. So, so many things happen but he had this ability of creating organizations which were very strong they, uh, i've read that book by ramchandra guha uh, gandhi before india it's a beautiful book whenever you get time if you really want to understand uh, to know about the south africa days of gandhi and how gandhi came into being and why gandhi is secular see a lot of people have a lot of questions about gandhi's life so many people also disdain him they don't respect him but most of those people they have not even read uh, what to say of Ram Chandra Guha. They have not even read a book like Spectrum or even the, uh, you know some other book. Amen. Okay. Anyway, so <coughs> moving ahead now regarding Gandhi's struggle uh, in South Africa. Uh, now, now we, I told you why, why he's a leader in South Africa. Okay. Now we have we know why he's a leader. So now we'll talk about his struggle in South Africa. Now, before you understand struggle, you must not to you understood why he's a leader and he's going to struggle in South Africa. But to understand uh, how Gandhi struggled, you must be uh, under, uh, able to understand what is the Gandhian philosophy, okay? And what are the conditions in which those philosophy developed, and why that philosophy developed? So I'll be just answering these few questions in the next few minutes, right? Now, see when he he goes to London, right? Now, he had this sense of justice and but when he saw racial injustice he and discrimination and degradation of the indians in south africa uh, he, he was appalled by it right so for example indians did not have right to vote and uh, they had to register pay the poll tax and whatnot right so indians in south africa were living in a poor condition indians in south africa were in poor condition okay bad condition they were there right so what happens in this kind of scenario you know in uh, for, uh, like they were very bad actually for, like so many places in south africa you indians were not allowed to come out of home after 9 pm and all that story right so that that is how it's going what is ha what happens here now gandhi became the you know and i told you that gandhi was there from 1893 to 1914 what happens is gandhi was engaged in some uh, heroic right though he, it was unequal struggle over there and it was during this struggle in in uh, south africa that gandhi develops his philosophy of satyagraha 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 is uh, is a combination of two words one is satya satya means truth agraha Agra means karna, to plead. So when you plead the truth, then you know everyone knows. You know people understand that, that this is truth. 
they may deny that but when you keep on pleading the truth even if you you know if someone slaps you even then you plead the truth that person will follow you he will be at you at his knees at your feet once he realizes you know once you tell him the truth that is how it goes okay so satyagraha and not only this gandhi in philosophy developed that the satyagraha that, that you have to say the truth it has to be based on the process of non violence why because see if if a hits b okay and you know uh, then then you know b hits back a right so what happens let's say a a had like you know a was the person right and he hits b and he blinds b okay b is blinded and uh, or let's say take one eye of b and b then takes another eye of a so both have done, now have one eye but then a son come and they revenge their father's violence by b against him so they they take his another eye he's blind now his sons come and they take other eye and also blind his uh, other sons a son so this way you know as gandhi said an eye for an eye will make the world blind this is just an analogy to help you understand that if violence created if one does violence and you also do the violence it will it will not result to final thing and second thing see you can commit violence only if you are powerful see if you are do, if you do not have enough power stamina strength how will you be violent for 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 a person who is not physically and who does less if doesn't have arms or whatever he just cannot commit uh, no, you know non violence act uh, i mean he can, cannot commit violent act that that is what it is okay so gandhian idea was that the satyagrahi he should be truthful and perfectly peaceful okay and he would you know refuse to submit what he considers wrong okay gandhian idea of satyagrah is that the that the person you you just say the truth and you say truth in all adversity whether you like someone likes it or not you always say the truth okay and uh, even then you know if if there is something evil okay please understand he said that even while resisting evil you know he would love the evil doer because see if you believe in god like most of the people do right so if if you believe in god so you have to believe that god created everyone and how can god, god create junk so god did not create uh, junk god created equal human beings some but some the devil so that is why we should hate evil not the evil doer because act is not the creation of god act is what you are doing evil doer is the human itself which has been created by god that was that was his belief okay and then you know um, gandhi said hate none even even the even the britishers see if 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 we have hated britishers what would have happened okay imagine it this way if we would have hated britishers what would happen if we would not have good india and britain relations right and but but the practical ground reality even though we suffered okay even though we suffered at the hands of britishers but the practical ground reality is that india cannot sustain even today without the help of the britishers we are so much dependent on them for so many things okay and britain britain is a important power in united nation at the so many other forums okay arctic council and what not i mean there's so there's so much right anyway so uh, what more gandhi said right uh, he but gandhi was like gandhi was kept on saying non violence but he said one thing this non violence has to be without fear it cannot be the work of a coward okay i tell you something if someone slaps you what will happen most probably you'll slap back okay and uh, if 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 you um, can maintain your calm okay and just don't uh, hit the person back what will happen you know but that will take lot of courage to do so and it does work you know the the mind of the other person changes i i i have my personal experiences doing this like after i read history i have been applying this to my life i i went to a person right i was driving a, a, a honda activa and, and and a person came from the wrong side and he hits his scooter into my scooter and i we both fall down and he gets up and he, he, he hits me okay so i just you know hold hold you know held his hand and while he was hitting me i just stopped him i did not hit him back and then i kept on asking him me uh, you know i kept on asking him why are you so raised i just kept on asking why are you so angry what will happen even if you get hit me what will what will you get and trust me you know it's laughable for so many people but the truth is that after 5 minutes he was at knees he was literally at my feet his father was his father came and touched my feet and said sorry to me okay so i'm not saying that that the father touching me my feet i'm like who am i i'm not nobody but then i'm telling you that there is lot of power in non violence i have seen it okay and if you tr- if you try it in your life you will also feel it right anyway so you know even even in his, um, but then gandhi said this non violence has to be without fear 
because if you are having non violence out of fear you know see you you do not commit non violence because you are not capable that is one aspect but you do not commit non you commit violence sorry non violence in spite of the capability of being violent you know you are strong enough you know i could have easily hit that person back so but even then you don't that is the kind of non violence gandhi said but then gandhi says but if you are doing non violence out of fear don't do it rather be violent this is what gandhi is saying he said he said this in in this magazine called young india he goes on to write in 1920 that non violence is the law of our species as violence is the law of the brute and where there is only a choice between cowardice and violence i would rather choose violence i would advise violence i would rather have india resort to arms in order to defend her honor that than that she should be in cowardly manner become or remain a helpless witness to her own dishonor so you know don't be fearful uh, not not that fearful non violence the, i hope you understand the difference between two you know when say someone okay i i hope it's clear right and then that was the gandhian philosophy okay and uh, gandhian said and another important aspect of gandhian philosophy that was very very peculiar of him he said that happiness lies in one thing when there is no difference between what you think your the thoughts your actions and your beliefs and your words okay thought actions and beliefs and words and then everything that you see when there is harmony between all then there is happiness so so th th this thing is was really a big deal for him right so th that is like uh, you know kind of uh, gandhian philosophy that gandhi ji developed right now coming back to that lecture uh, we are talking about the how gandhi struggled in south africa struggle in south africa what was he doing now there are two phases of struggle in the south africa right first phase is from the 1894 to 1906 and the other phase is from the 1906 onwards okay 1906 onwards okay now uh, what happens in the this is the first phase this is also known as the moderate phase but why is it called moderate phase you know that garam dal एक जो नरम दल गरम दल हमने पढ़ा था तो ये नरम दल है जो वी ऑल्सो रेड अबाउट दैट इन अर्लियर लेक्चर एंड देन व्हाट हैपन्स इन द मॉडरेट फेज ही डज ऑल दोज एक्टिविटीज विच मॉडरेट्स वर डूइंग इन इंडिया बिकॉज ही जेन्यूनली बिलीव्ड इन ब्रिटिशर्स बिकॉज ही लिव्ड विद देम एंड ही वॉज नेवर ट्रीटेड दिस वे ही थॉट दैट ब्रिटिशर्स एक्चुअली नॉट अवेयर ऑफ वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन साउथ अफ्रीका सी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एट दैट टाइम द मीन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन वर वेरी वीक एंड इट इज नॉट लाइक टूडे दैट समथिंग हैपन्स इन द यू नो होनो लुलू एंड दैट दैट कम्स ऑल्सो टू द you know the the you know the, the smallest gown the smallest village of india everyone is aware of it, it doesn't work like that it didn't work like that uh, at that time right so moderate policies like for example you know those like petitioning and writing articles and writing memorials such so, so all those things right he believed in the british fair play and he right and he also sets up what is called as the natal indian congress natal indian congress this word natal is from the origin nativity anyway so natal indian congress was there right he, he and of the natal indian congress he starts a newspaper which is called as the indian opinion this started in 1903 and it was a mouthpiece of his struggle and gandhi ji tried all the moderate ways but then when when he failed over here gandhi failed in this aspect and then he realized that the moderate method is not going to work and we will need passive resistance passive resistance and that is why he, the, the, with that is where the second phase of the movement comes that is 1906 onwards passive resistance or less civil disobedience movement or the non cooperation movement you know gandhi ji whatever it you may call it gandhi ji call it satyagraha without understanding policy of satyagraha the, uh, people you know they they say so much of uh, sh crap about the gandhian policy satyagraha no not many people really understand it satyagraha means you speak the truth gandhi says this when you speak the truth something happens in the mind of the person who is hurting you and i have like i have my own practical experience so i can vouch for it different people different experiences anyway so so for the first time it was used uh, actually when the government made it compulsory what had happened that the south african government made it compulsory for indians to always carry a certificate of their registration a certificate of registration with themselves as if they were lesser citizens of south africa whites were not to do so and this certificate always carried their fingerprints and they always had to carry giving the impression that they were the outsiders always see it was mandatory for indians to give a uh, finger and thumb impression on on this registration form right so what gandhi did he organized he goes and he he for the first time this is the first big movement moment of the history this is there is a empire theater building in johannesburg in south africa gandhi goes there and he talks to people and he says this thing over there that my my son my brother my friend 
there is every cause in the world for which i am ready to die but there is no cause for which i am ready to kill दुनिया में बहुत कारण है जिनके लिए मैं मरने को तैयार हूं पर दुनिया में ऐसा कोई कारण नहीं है जिसके लिए मैं मरने को भी तैयार हूं दिस इज द गांधी पॉलिसी ऑफ नॉन वायलेंस ओवर देर एंड वॉट टू से इट डिड चेंज द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट एब्सोल्यूटली इन साउथ अफ्रीका एट द एंड राइट एंड इन फॉर दिस पर्पज नाउ वी बिकॉज नो वी नो दैट गांधी इज मूव फ्रॉम द मॉडरेट पॉलिटिक्स टू द एक्टिव पॉलिटिक्स एंड गांधी ओवर फॉर्म वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज द पैसिव रेजिस्टेंस एसोसिएशन ओके पैसिव रेजिस्टेंस association association and gandhi doesn't himself register him uh, for this certificate over here right and uh, uh, and gandhi doesn't register and then he is arrested okay and then he uh, he is produced before court and before the court he says yes i am guilty that that is the difference that is a huge difference when he goes to the court he says i'm guilty uh, under your law but i call your law is unjust mai us kanoon ke niche guilty hu maine galat kiya hai ki jisko aapne banaya hai लेकिन एक बात गांधी इज सेइंग दैट योर लॉ इज अनजस्ट आपका तो लॉ ही गलत है एंड आफ्टर दिस देर आर सो मेनी अरेस्ट दैट द जेल एट दैट टाइम स्टार्टेड कॉल्ड एज द किंग एडवर्ड्स होटल ओके सो दैट इज ऑल द रेवोल्यूशनरी ऑल द फ्रीडम फाइटर्स वर ऑलवेज क्रिएटिंग विद एम सेल्फ एंड किंग एडवर्ड होटल वाज देयर राइट नाउ जनरल स्मर्ट्स इज द पर्सन ओवर एयर ही कॉल्स अप Mahatma Gandhi to his office, and you know he said he would withdraw legislation if they register themselves voluntarily. Gandhi was the first to register, but Smart General Smart is a very clever guy. He plays the trick and he ratifies the law under the voluntary registration. And Gandhi publicly then burns his registration. Gandhi burns his the registration certificates that were given to him, right? <coughs> and it is over here, right? You know when Gandhi is uh, then Gandhi is of course arrested and all that story. And Gandhi is in jail, okay? And when Gandhi is uh, coming out of jail, he says, "Can I just go out in these clothes only?" He is in the clothes of the prisoner. Basically, what is happening that he is showing the world through his words, actions, clothing, emotions, expressions, everything that how he is fighting for them. so this is like one issue related to the south africa uh, struggle and the second issue relating to the struggle in south africa it is uh, related to the uh, law restricting indian immigration indian immigration in this what had happened is that in 1908 a uh, lot of indians were there right they were not allowed to uh, go to transvaal okay uh, from natal and so what indians did a lot of indian defied this law and they crossed natal and to they and they reached the transvaal uh, they basically defied the orders and gandhi also of course was one of them and uh, after this you know gandhi is arrested and government tries to deport people back and see government what does not this time they cut water you see electricity and all that thing that, that they could do right and uh, to force them out basically gandhi here was under rigorous imprisonment he had to cut the stones don't think of this you know that small little kamzor sai gandhi we gandhi frail sa his idea over here gandhi is very strong he's young young man so you know starvation and whipping and sweep the compound those kind of punishments were given to all the people including gandhi then what happened the negotiation started between lot of people they said this way how how long it will go so gandhi general smarts and andrews was there okay all these people they start the discussion and they they enter enter into an agreement which which under which the major demands are met and the registration certificates according to indian rights were given anyway right but then you know there was there was more is there were more issues for example there was issue of poll tax against which gandhi protested there and then there was one uh, one law which really agitated people it was later that the if a marriage is not according to christian right it is a invalid marriage uh, in other words uh, a, ma- a marriage would be illegal so all the children that were born those would be bastards so that that is how it is going on okay and then you know uh, Uh, gandhi uh, uh, and in 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 this you know in this campaign gandhi's wife also plays a great role kasturba gandhi she she also uh, plays a great role in uh, this movement and she also crosses the camp border and all that story okay it was an insult to indian women if you want to go to more details of south african history you can always refer to the book there's just one book which i will say i'll highly recommend the reading that book and that is gandhi before india by ramchandra guha okay and i haven't come across a better book than that so far at least right 
that is in 2015 let's see if tomorrow anything better comes up but that is really good anyway so there were also some financial problems okay now this is like done right now there were some financial problems uh, uh, uh with gandhi at this time in britain and what uh, basically uh, his own because he was so busy with the all the political activities his legal practice has gone gone into rex khatam ho gayi and he had no money and then you know he devoted himself to the cause uh, you know and there was crunch of money for running indian opinion right so indian opinion money a newspaper also could, was not able to be run properly because of lack of funding so at this point you know uh, gandhi comes across a very uh, nice person his name is kalan batch and later on he is a german person and he becomes a great friend of gandhi he is a rich person and he is an architect and he also helps gandhi in setting up tolstoy farm in fact he himself does physical labor to set this farm up and then uh, he did experiments basically related to philosophy at this tolstoy farm only right and his faith in satyagraha and, and he believed his faith in hindu muslim unity uh, started over here gandhi was extremely secular person see this fighting case of a muslim person king dada abdullah he stays with a muslim he has many muslim juniors later on we'll find he's always okay, uh, talking to hindus muslim christians lot of people okay so he was basically highly secular person the secular credentials cannot be challenged by anyone if he is if any person does that that person does not know history well anyway so and then you know tata family they also gave gandhi a lot of money at that time 25000 rupees for settlement of all these farms and everything right that a lot of people contributed to gandhi and struggle for congress contributed muslim league contributed even the nizam of hyderabad contributed uh, money for the purpose of the growth of indian nationalistic movement over there right so overall you know what happens here in this scene the, the the conclusion is that the gandhian model was now ready that the gandhi is now ready to fight his south african experiment it was successful now it was it was to be implemented in india gandhi was ready for the leadership because he had learned his lessons for example when he was in south africa he learned a very tough lesson that sometimes you have to take tough decisions even your juniors might disagree with you and one of the pathans even hit him when he took unpopular decision now right so he led different uh, gandhi was head of hindus of the muslims so how can how can muslims allow their head to be a hindu if gandhi would have been a communal person he was highly secular person that just cannot be questioned i don't know how people question this those ignorance anyway so religions you know he was the head of the, all the classes rich poor peasant men women everyone right and he also learned you know from as i told you pathan attacked him right with government uh, because if see why the why the person uh, there was a pathan who actually attacked him why he attacked him because he was uh, reaching agreement with the government right and he realized thing that leaders often have to take hard decisions there right now after this i would like to talk to you about a very uh, specific thing which you will not find uh, easily in, in uh, many books and that is related to the uh, i'm going to talk about the important associates of gandhi important associates uh, of gandhi uh, 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 in basically mainly in south africa uh, about which i am more interested okay so the first one is uh, dr abdullah dr uh, abdullah right now dr abdullah uh, he was uh, um, as called he was the president of the african political organization okay uh, he was the president of the african political organization and he also was the member of the cape town municipality he was associate of the of gandhi ji okay then number 2 over here it was uh, sorab ji shapur ji sorab ji shapur ji these names are very important and these were basically related to gandhi uh, uh, over there okay and this person he played a very key role in satyagraha movements of south africa satyagraha movement sarab sharab ji sapur ji satyagraha movement in south africa he played a great role right then after this comes uh, next one is a uh, cf andrews now he is a very uh, dear person to uh, gandhi and very it is a very interesting story he you know cf andrews is also known as the dina bandhu dina bandhu you know friend of the poor that is what dina bandhu means now gandhi gave him title he this title for contribution to india along with the uh, saint stephen college uh, the students of the saint stephen college of delhi they gave him this title of dina bandhu and then he he played a great role in bringing hindus christians together and though he was a uh, christianity promoter any anyway, right 
then he would stay at shanti niketan that was where the tagore was staying, staying staying right and he also c- criticized gandhi for supporting britishers in world war 1 he criticized gandhi for this because he thought that gandhi was a believer of non violence but then why is he supporting violence then he criticized gandhi for this over here okay now uh, the lot of that this debatable topic actually see gandhi was a very practical person obviously when there is a war you are not so how can you just be sitting at home and fighting with non violence same way in the even in the case of 1942 quit india movement gandhi did not stop the violence at that time because it, see the way you have to see all the things in a in a, in a circumstantial aspect right then you know number 4 uh, very important over here was um, there was a dada abdullah one was dr abdullah this is dada abdullah dada abdullah now this person obviously you know he stayed with him is the company whose whose case gandhi ji was fighting so i will not go into details of this right then there was kellen batch i have already talked about him kellen batch herman herman now this person he was german architect a tolstoy firm and linked he was also this person you know uh, he he is also linked with a very important thing uh, which is called as the seva gram ashram uh, which later on is made okay seva gram ashram and this ashram is there in uh, vardha var the uh, maharashtra okay then after that uh, there are more, more people for example gandhi had a very very important associate in the name of uh, uh, p k naidu okay naidu we or uh, uh, you know he was also known as the krishna swami krishna swami naidu okay Uh, P K Naidu, he's a very important important person that Gandhi meets in South Africa. Number seven, Gandhi is uh, Gandhi. Uh, he meets non- the few people Gandhi met on later on. For example, Acharya Vinoba Bhave, right? He was linked with the Vardha Ashram, and that is why I'm just mentioning him. He also starts that Bhutan movement, right, and all that. Then very important associate of Gandhi uh, is Meera Ben, Meera Ben, or Meera Ben, as you want to say this. She her her original name is I'll just write that name here. Her original name is Madeline. just like magellan strait so her name is madeline slade right i hope you know where is magellan strait anyway so uh, she was the daughter of an english admiral okay and he, she was introduced to uh, she was introduced to gandhi by romain roland okay uh, romain roland and uh, uh, this person who may know he was a Lo- nobel laureate in literature and he was the first one to write about gandhi ji and he also wrote a biography of uh, swami vivekananda this person roman roland that is important person for us okay and then another important associate of gandhi that is uh, now not in south africa exactly okay and this person is uh, is known as uh, uh, amrit lal thakkar amrit lal thakkar he is also known as thakkar bappa and bappa nagar i hope you know the place that is associated or named after him only okay he helped in uh, formation of what is called as the uh, harijan sevak sangh let me just write it here for you uh, okay uh, okay let me just change the color of this and because it was a different one yeah so uh, he he goes on to write what is known as the harijan uh, sevak sangh that is made by amritlal thakkar at this time and it was a uh, form of gandhi played a great role in it right and uh, you know for those people in living in delhi uh, he this person did a great deal of work for uh, tribals okay and <clears throat> because a lot of people uh, who are preparing for upsc in their exam they stayed in areas like kodra in the nagar krolbag and all that area you can go sometime whenever you free there is a um, आदम जाति संग्रहालय नियर झंडे वालन ओके एंड वेन आर्टिक फैक्ट्स ऑफ ट्राइबल्स रिलेटेड दे आर देयर ओके एंड देन फाइनली यू नो लास्ट पर्सन आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक टू यू ओवर हेयर एज एज मनी बेन एंड मनी बेन इज द मनी बेन मनी बेन इज डॉटर ऑफ सरदार पटेल एंड शी इज ऑल्सो इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन गांधी मूवमेंट इन गुजरात एंड मनी बेन इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू वट इज कॉल्ड एज द गुजरात विद्यापीठ ओके शी इज रिलेटेड टू गुजरात विद्यापीठ गुजरात vidyapeet right so these were the few people few associates of uh, mahatma gandhi okay now after this uh, gandhi comes to india and what he does in india we'll talk that in the next lecture okay so what are the things that i'll be talking to you when gandhi comes to india basically all his struggles right gandhi comes to india and once he's in india what does he do his his struggles in india for example his champaran satyagraha ahmedabad strike and kheda uh, satyagraha okay kheda movement and then uh raulet satyagraha and then what satyagraha sab and all then jallianwala bag kaand will happen okay that is how it will be going on we'll be doing that all in the next lecture right and now before you go uh, you know like always i just have 
two requests for you one is please do share this video with other people you know let the word spread see it's for free at least you can do this much you can okay. I'm doing this for you making videos you can do this for me you can share this and number two is you can click on the like button that gets that helps me know you know the videos go out bad what kind of things are happening okay and um, lastly for your own benefit if you want these, these this video and all the videos of the future to come right into your email box then you have to click, click on the subscribe button that is over here right so that is all and thank you so much for watching this